Big news for election integrity in Texas. It's June 26, 2024, and these are your headlines. A new advisory from the Secretary of State could lead to pre-printed, sequentially numbered ballots in many of Texas's counties, a move that many election integrity activists have long been advocating for. First, we'll go over the advisory. And the language here gets a little deep. Don't worry, I'm going to explain it. But the advisory says, in light of recent events that have highlighted how publicly available records may be used to impact a voter's right to a secret ballot, our office has revised the standards for certification of an electronic poll book system. Those revised standards prohibit the generation of ballot numbers using electronic poll book systems or using peripheral devices that directly connect to electronic poll book systems. Additionally, it states jurisdictions using those systems are now required to use ballot numbering methods that do not involve the use of the electronic poll book system or peripherals that are directly connected to those systems. So what does this mean for Texas? Well, recent discussions around election security have focused on two goals, ensuring that ballots can be audited while also maintaining voter secrecy. Numbered ballots accomplish the first goal by allowing for audits, but concerns have been raised that these numbered ballots could be traced back to the voters, which violates the second goal. So these kind of become competing in some ways. Numbered ballots ensure that all ballots are accounted for and prevent illegal additions. Most electronic machines meet this requirement by printing a random number on the ballot. However, Not all machines handle this process the same way, particularly in relation to their connection to the electronic poll book, which is used to check in voters, verify registration, and prevent double voting. Currently, Texas counties use one of two electronic voting system manufacturers for the most part. There's HART and there's election systems and software, ES and S. With HART systems, Voters are given a code after signing in. When entered into the voting machine, this code instructs the machine on which ballot style is needed. So uh, what what exactly uh, is going to be on your ballot, depending on your precinct and which primary, et cetera, that you're voting in. The machine then assigns a number to the ballot with no connection in this whole process to the internet or the electronic poll book that you checked in on. With the ESNS systems, after checking in, voters are given a ballot with a number printed by software that is connected to the electronic poll book. And these are the machines that are affected by the recent advisory. Some counties using ESNS systems had already started pre-printing sequentially numbered ballots, while others like Williamson County recently announced that they would begin doing so at the behest of citizens. The Secretary of State's advisory now mandates this practice for all counties you would see in ESNS, which includes about half of the counties currently in Texas. This week, the Texas Ethics Commission fined Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo after finding she used public funds for political advertising. The complaint against Hidalgo stemmed from a press conference she held in her official capacity, during which she supported Harris County District Attorney candidate Sean Tier and opposed incumbent DA Kim Ogg. A copy of that press conference was posted to her official social media accounts and website. The videos were later removed after a complaint was filed with the TEC. She'll pay a penalty of $500, which, by the way, pales in comparison to a lot of the penalties the TEC assesses to citizens and activists, uh, but an elected official, $500. Okay. Harris County has been beset with public corruption allegations, several of which revolve around Adago. In April of this year, Attorney General Ken Paxton was asked to prosecute Adago staff members implicated in an inappropriately awarded $11 million COVID outreach contract by outgoing DA Og. The three Adago staffers were charged with felonies for misusing official information and tampering with a government record to help steer the contract to a Democrat political operative, Felicity Pereira. Adago has been in the news this week for ill-politicizing the rape and murder of 12-year-old Houstonian Jocelyn Nungare, blaming her death at the hands of two illegal aliens on former President Donald Trump. After she was confronted on this point, Hidalgo incorrectly stated that President Biden had reached an agreement with Mitch McConnell on reinstating Trump-era Remain in Mexico policies, but that Republicans backed out of the deal on Trump's orders. Governor Greg Abbott, in response, called Lena Hidalgo a con. Are you worried about your kid's future? You should be. I'm Charles Blaine with Texas Tomorrow. 
This is a show where we're gonna talk about the issues and the people that are pushing the policies that concern your family, your home, and your kids. Catch Texas tomorrow, every Thursday. The Department of Homeland Security has confirmed that the alleged murders of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nogare initially entered the country illegally at El Paso, where they were arrested by U.S. Border Patrol and then released into the country. Franklin Pena and Johan Jose Martinez Rangel allegedly lured the young victim under a bridge in Houston after she reportedly snuck out of her home at night. The two then stripped off her clothes and assaulted her for two hours before dumping her body in a bayou. Both predators are illegal aliens who allegedly entered the country in El Paso at different times. News Nation Network correspondent Ali Bradley said on X that multiple DHS sources confirmed the suspects in the murder of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungare are here illegally from Venezuela with pending court cases. One of them entered just 23 days ago. Though both Peña and Martinez Rangel face capital murder charges, Harris County DA Kim Ong suggested that they currently are not eligible for execution based solely on the age of the victim. That's because according to Texas law, the death penalty is not sought in cases of solely murder of a child ages 10 to 15 years old. There has to be another aggravating factor. Because Nungare was 12 years old, she would fall into this category, according to Og. However, once lab results are confirmed, that could change if the suspects are found to be guilty of sexual assault and rape. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.